This week on TGC News, Seekins has a new bolt gun, Neomag drops the alias, and Smith & Wesson brings out a 10 mil m &P. If you need gun accessories, check out Fab Defense. They have all kinds of parts for the AR platforms, like pistol grips, butt stocks, foregrips, and more. I'm really enjoying this sort of mid-range setup on my digital camo AR with the wrap stock, gratis grip, and spike bipod. There's also flip-up sights and parts for your AK or even your pistol. From long-range setups to compact AR pistols and everything in between, Fab Defense has something for everyone. To learn more, check out fab-defense.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Let's start climbing this week's mountain of content with a bit of an embarrassing moment for Colt. As it turns out, they put out a recall for certain MSRs, otherwise known to us non-placating people, as AR-15s. There are 18 different models that are affected by, according to Colt, hammers installed in certain MSRs that do not meet Colt's specifications. They say that the gun might discharge another round when the trigger is released, if there is a round in the chamber, which sounds more like a feature than a reason for a recall, but I suppose if that's not on purpose, it could be a problem. Colt has a breakdown on the serial numbers and models affected on their website. Next up is a new bolt action rifle from Seekins Precision. They, to me, were mainly like an AR-based company and they've moved into bolt actions with their Havoc. It's part of the Havoc line and it's called the HIT, or HIT. They claim that this is the most innovative bolt action rifle ever made. I am far, far from the right person to dictate whether or not that's true, unfortunately, but we'll cover the highlights and I'm sure someone will weigh in down below on whether it's good or not. At the heart is the receiver, which is not a Remington 700 pattern like a lot of others on the market, but rather Seekin's own design. It has a 20 MOA pick rail on the top, machined in of course, and a flat bottom, which is unique because typically they're round. As Glenn Seekins said in their live stream announcement video, it's easier to make two flat surfaces that match up rather than two round surfaces exactly the same. Because of that flat bottom, they claim it requires no bedding and they can guarantee head spacing when you swap barrels, calibers, whatever. Oh yeah, you can do that and the barrel specs are open source so that anybody can make one. The bolt face swaps with no tools as well, which is pretty rad. I like that kind of stuff. It's easy to do when you're out in the field. And they made their own chassis. It goes on and on with a bunch of neat stuff. Beyond that, the trigger in the live stream appears to be a Timney Elite Hunter, but the website makes no mention of what trigger comes with the gun. It just says, there's, it takes a Remington 700 pattern trigger. They don't even say what it is. Okay, it does say that you can have one in 308, 65 PRC, 65 Creedmoor, 6 Creedmoor, or 6 GT. New one for me. They will all be 24 inch 416R stainless steel barrels. And the price tag for all that fanciness, 2,100 bucks. Honestly, if all of those claims stack up, this could be worth the bucks. Next up, a new one from a company that seems to have fallen off the map for a while. They're called DRD Tactical, and when they came out back in 2013, they made waves with their suitcase gun that FPS Russia showed off. Since that sort of died down, I really haven't seen much from them. As it turns out, they have a new pistol called the MFP-21. It has their 8-inch QD barrel setup chambered in 300 blackout with a side-charging upper with a recoil system that is contained in the upper. The lower is one of those, you can never put a stock on these jobs with a machined pick rail on the back where the buffer tube would normally be. Other than that, it's basically an AR pistol, all for the low, low price of 2,500 bucks. I'm struggling with this one, I really am. Sure, there are some neat features, but do they equate to a $2,500 price tag? I'm not so sure especially when you consider that you could put together a Brownells BRN 180 in 300 blackout for about a thousand bucks less and have a brace included. 
I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something here, but that seems really expensive for what you're getting. Now let's swing the complete opposite direction and look at something in the budget category of firearms. This time it's from American Tactical Imports and it's called the FXS9. It looks like the designers of this gun copied a little bit of everyone's homework here because I see elements from a bunch of different guns going on. I would be impressed. I would genuinely be impressed if we could get a gun imported from Turkey that wasn't a sort of potpourri of guns. Like, it's ridiculous. None of them are original designs. It's crazy. This FXS9 is a striker fired 9 with a 4.1 inch barrel, 17 round mags, serrations on the front and rear of the slide, texture all over the place, and removable back straps. And it carries an MSRP of $349.95. 350 bucks really isn't that bad if the thing is any good, but the good part, that is still the question mark in my eyes. This could be a complete turd. I don't know. You know what's not a question mark though? Buying a TGC shirt for your friends and family for the holidays, sort of like this one over at Shall Not Comply, link in the pinned comment. Now let's keep things rolling forward with some accessories that are new. Yeah, why not, right? First is one from a company called Neomag. Clever viewers will remember that Neomag has been a sponsor of TGC for a very long time. However, they don't even know that I'm going to talk about this, so it's definitely not a paid placement. I, th that's not the thing. They are a sponsor, but this is cool. They just released a new holster attachment system that's not quite like anything I've seen before. It's called Alias, and the core of it is based around a sort of holster clip and receiver setup. You replace the probably plastic clip on your holster with their metal one that clicks into the receiver, which either mounts to your belt or can be hard mounted to whatever you want, like under a desk, in your car, blah, blah, blah. You guys can come up with lots of ideas. And when you want to move the holster to a different location, it unclips with the push of a button. I've seen other brands try to tackle this issue, but the solution is either not really robust enough, like if you could probably yank it apart, or it's just way too complicated. This seems to allow you to use your holster of choice and mount it without a huge plate attached to the wall. It's not like this, it's a, a small thing. The price for the kit with a belt mount, hard mount, and a clip, it's a three-piece kit, is 60 bucks. Also, because this is not an ad, you will have to dig for our promo code in some other video. I'm not gonna... I don't want to have any confusion on whether they paid for that or not. Steiner has a new tiny red dot optic called the MPS, which stands for Micro Pistol Sight. Yep, another slide rider. This one is the fully enclosed style with an all metal construction and a recessed window to sort of protect the lenses or inset. They brag about this thing being lightweight, but when I looked around, the MPS weight of two 0.05 ounces isn't that far off from other similar options. And the runtime of 13,000 hours seems really weak when you compare it to the 50,000 hours of runtime from the Aimpoint Acro P2 and the Holosun 509, which are somewhat similar optics. It does have an auto off feature though, which is nice. And Steiner does have a solid reputation if that matters to you. The MSRP on the MPS is 575. And rounding out the accessories is something that only kind of needs a quick mention. It's not often that you see manufacturers trying to make their products significantly cheaper, like a cheaper version of what they do, especially when it comes to aftermarket triggers. Apex took their $170 flat face trigger for M&Ps and made a polymer version that knocks about 70 bucks off the price. It works for the M&P 2.0 guns, except the shields. Like I said, just a quick mention, because I think it's rad for companies to care enough to do that. And it's a great trigger. Genevieve actually runs them on her MPs. And last minute edition is here on the news. This came out this morning when I was writing it. I was like, oh man, I have to cover this. Sort of took over my brain. In another example of gun companies actually listening to their customers, Smith & Wesson has finally done it. They just released today the MP. M2.0 10 millimeter. Yes, a 10 mil M&P, finally. Let's hit the specs and talk about it. First off, all four models are optic ready and come with raised sights for co-witnessing with optics. They're not suppressor height because it's not a threaded barrel. It breaks down into two barrel lengths with or without a safety. That's how you get your four models. 
There is the four inch barrel and the 4.6 inch barrel versions. Both come with 15 round magazines, which is about standard for full size 10 mils. They also come with the new-ish flat face trigger that is very similar to the one we got on the M&P Shield Plus. For the record, that is one of the best factory triggers around in my opinion, and a big leap forward from the old hinged triggers that came on M&Ps. This is a worlds above that. That makes this M&P a threaded barrel short of being a near perfect 10 mil, in my opinion. That's of course without shooting it. As far as pricing goes, it's not like unsurprising. The four inch barrel has an MSRP of 654 and you pay an extra 11 bucks on top of that to get the 4.6 inch version. I wanna hear from you guys on this one, of course. Oh, I'd love to hear about it. Is this the gun we need to get more people excited about 10 mil? Is that what this is gonna do? Is it as cool as I think it is or am I drunk on like new gun fumes? I am eager to hear from you guys on all of these new products. We covered a bunch so far. Is there anything that stands out to you? Why or why not? Sound off below and let's talk about it. That's what we do. Yeah. Just because I'm addicted to caffeine does not mean that I have to settle for coffee. Blackout Coffee, F yeah. To get 10% off your entire order, go to blackoutcoffee.com and use the code TGC. That's blackoutcoffee.com slash TGC and use the code TGC. How about we jump into some industry news and then hit the background check numbers? Why don't we do that? I like that order of events. So here we go. Remington Firearms, or as they pedantically want to be called, Rem Arms, is moving out of New York. Finally, this continues the trend of brands moving out of the Northeast and into the Southern part of the US where they've been sort of welcomed with open arms. Remington is moving to the great state of Georgia, specifically a town called LaGrange, which is just North of Columbus on the Alabama Georgia line. Remington claims to be investing $100 million and creating 856 jobs over a five year period at that factory. Sounds fantastic, hopefully. They maintain quality control during this process because that's one of the many reasons the brand tanked right before the bankruptcy. And that's how we got here. <laughs> also in relocation news, Smith & Wesson has broken ground in Tennessee. They had a fancy ceremony showing off the start of their $125 million investment in Maryville, Tennessee, and even have a special edition protecting the 2A engraved rifle to go with it. I may not have believed that claim that protecting the 2A had they not gotten the hell out of Massachusetts, but here they are putting millions of dollars where their mouth is. Also rounding us out this week, we have the background check numbers for October, 2021. We'll keep it simple this week since we've had a lot to cover already. In October of this year, we had just over two and a half million background checks. That's actually down from last year, which was 3.3 million checks. This indicates a not so surprising trend of dwindling panic buying, supply issues that are still present and sheer exhaustion from consumers. That's really a thing. However, there are still two months left in the year and with our yearly total just 6.6 .6 million shy of last year, we still have a chance to push past that record breaking number. As per usual, I will point out that this is not a direct indicator of firearms sold for a multitude of reasons, but it is a good indicator of a trend. I'm excited to see that even with a slight downturn in the numbers across the last few months, we still have crushed every year prior to 2020. We kind of have a shot, unlikely at this point, but we have a shot to beat 2020 numbers. And that's it guys. If you enjoyed this show and you want to see an ad free version, check us out on floatplane.com. After you click the like button on this video, go to the secret affiliate link down in the description. It's a buy one, get one free deal that you guys are probably going to love. That would be a massive help for us. Of course, rolling into the holidays, we love support. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.